Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about how to change the camera position in Haxflixel so you can show more or less of your game depending on the position of the player. So if you've played a game like Limbo, you'll see that the game shows more of the right side of the screen than the left side when the player is moving. And this adds to the kind of eerie atmosphere in the game. It also allows the player to see more of what's coming up. And I'm going to show you how to achieve that in Haxflixel. Before we continue, I need to apologize for the bad quality of my audio. We are moving house, so the microphone is all packed up in a box ready to go. And right now I'm relying on the microphone that comes with my headphones. So they're not the best, but they'll do for now. Okay, so right now I have this scene where there is a player at the bottom left hand corner, which is a blue rectangle. And I can move the player with the left and right keys on the keyboard. And if I keep going to the right, you'll see the player will hit the center of the level and keep going until there's no more level to go to. And then we'll go to the right side of the screen. Now this is achieved with something in Flixel called a dead zone. And in order to make sure that the player isn't moving at the center of the screen, we need to change the dead zone. So let's run through the code very quickly. As you can see, there's nothing fancy here. It's just the background, which is an image. It's a long background, so it's three times the length of the actual width, which is 1280. And then we have some boundaries in the level. So the player doesn't go off screen when they go too far to the left or right. We have the player, which is a simple blue rectangle and the camera down here. We also have the player's controls and an update function to run the controls and the player collisions. And that's it. Now, the reason why the player is stuck to the center of the screen when they're moving to see more of the level is because the dead zone is at the center. Haxpixel out of the box provides many different dead zone presets, and we can see them all here in this demo. This is the lockdown preset for dead zone. And as you can see, it's quite close to the moving sprite. This is no dead zone. So the sprite has more free reign to move around screen by screen. So it just jumps between screens, top down tight, top down platformer, and you get the gist, the dead zone size changes based on the preset. But as you can see, it's always focused on the center. There's nothing off center. To create something off center, we'd have to create our own dead zone from scratch. And that's not as difficult as it sounds. The first thing to do in our code is to make our current dead zone visible. So we know what position we want the new dead zone to be in. Now I'm going to write the code and then explain what the code is doing afterwards. Okay, so on line 34, the first thing we're doing is getting the details of the dead zone at the moment, which is stored in FLXG camera. The dead zone is an FLX rect. So in order to use this type, make sure you've got FLX rect imported in from Flexil Math. Once we have that, we can then create a sprite with those details. So as you can see, I've got the X position and the Y position set for the FLX sprite and the width and the height also set for the sprite too. Now, Flixel Rect have width and height that are floats and the make graphic method only accepts ints. So the floats need to be converted to ints with the standard int function. Finally, I've made the color of the sprite black so that we can see it. And on line 36, I've set the scroll factor to zero on the X and the Y axis so that it stays put on the screen and doesn't move along when the player is moving. Now we need to make sure that all this code is below where we set our camera because this won't work. Now, if we go back to our game, we can see that there is a black square in the middle of the screen. 
if we move the player towards the black square, the camera does not move until we intersect with it and then the camera moves. When we come out of the black square and there's no more level left, the player has free movement. If you want to see the difference in dead zone size when you change the camera follow style, you can do so here. So now that it's changed to platformer, the lockdown size should be different. As you can see, it's much bigger and the player has more free movement in the middle of the screen than they did with the lock-on style. We can actually go into the code and see what happens when you change the dead zone presets. In the case of lock-on, this width and height here come from the Flixel camera width and height. And in the case of lock-on, the W and H variables are for the player or whatever is passed into the target. So this is the player width and height. And so it's getting the camera width, minusing it by the player width and dividing it by two. This is all to create the rectangle for the dead zone. And based on the preset type, it will have a different dead zone size. So in the case of the platformer, the width is actually an eighth of the camera width and the height is actually a third of the camera height. Now we can use this knowledge to our advantage to create our own dead zone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use similar code to the lock on preset to create my own custom dead zone. As usual, I'm going to write the code first and then explain later what it's doing. Okay, so this code here is very similar to the lock-on code. What we're doing is getting the camera's width and minusing it to the player's width, dividing it by two. Also getting the camera height and minusing it to the player height and dividing that by two. But what's different in our case is that we've shifted this X position to the left by 100 pixels. So the player should see more of the right side. Again, to copy the lock-on preset, we've got the width and the height of the player to keep the game movement tight. Let's see what difference this makes. So going into our game, you'd notice the dead zone position is now shifted to the left a bit more. And if I move the player, once I come into the dead zone, that's when the camera starts moving. In my personal opinion, I'd like to see a bit more of the right side. So I'm going to adjust the code. Let's change this 100 to 300. And now the dead zone is much more on the left side, giving me, the player, more chance to see what's on the right. So now I can see what's coming up a lot earlier and I can react to it. Of course, feel free to tweak these dead zone settings to what would suit your game. Now let's get rid of our dead zone sprite. And we can see how different the game feels having the camera move much earlier than it did before. I hope you found this video useful. I'm going to put some links to what I've talked about in the description of this video. And once again, thanks for watching. As usual, please like and subscribe so that more people can get access to this video.